Okay, here we have the Ioptron ZQ25GT, and I've got it set up in my basement here. And what I'm going to do is just try to take you through a quick walkthrough of how to align the mount and get a proper zero position, or at least a, a repeatable zero position. The mount does have a bubble uh, level in it built into the left side of the mount. Unfortunately, as you can see here, it's not that easy to see especially at night and parts of the views are obstructed in the evening when you when you really want to get it level so it, it's a good bubble level and, it's a, and if you want to use that as your starting your starting point your, your basic zero position that's fine but uh, I just prefer to use a little bubble level that I've just attached with some with some silicone glue right to the base the uh, the tripod spreader all right and that's what I use for my particular setup because for me it's repeatable. I really don't care if it agrees with the bubble level in the mount or not because I'm going to square the mount to this particular level right here. So in a minute we'll be right back and we'll get this thing squared up. Alright here we have hopefully a nice uh, clear shot of that T level I have set up on a tripod spreader tray. Uh, what I like about this particular one I picked up at a local hardware store. It's actually cut out and I can, I can get a inch and a quarter EP behind it and still use it for storage. Uh, it has holes in it where you can glue it to the tripod spreader tray if you really get ambitious. I just use a little bit of silicone glue. Uh, it's pretty pretty close and vertical. What I'm going to do is adjust it in, hor in the horizontal plane and see if we can get that bubble uh, leveled up. And then we can continue on and show you how to square it up, square the mount up to this bubble. And I'm just screwing a leg in uh, slightly. And right there, I don't know how it looks like from your perspective, but it's right on the money looking from the other side of the mount, so we'll call that level, okay? So now that we have the tripod level, we have a reference level. I'll show you how to square the mount up to that reference level and establish a repeatable zero point. So stay tuned, I'll be right back. Okay, here we're looking at the top of the ZEQ25 tripod uh, mount, and I'm going to show you how to square this mount up to the small T bubble that you got, or circular level you've got in your tripod spreader, whichever you use. All you need is a an inexpensive carpenter's level. It must have a V groove. The reason it must have a V groove is because there are no flat surfaces on this, uh, so it's got to span. <clears throat> it's got to span a, a curved surface, and you don't want it. If we're flat, as you can see, you, there's no way to get that bubble level. It's got to, it's got to be secured by that V groove, so you can actually get a, a valid reading. We don't have to worry about this particular surface. This never moves. We, we want what we're concerned about is this surface that moves in RA. So we're going to put the bubble level here, and it's off just a hair. So I'm going to use a speed uh, six. See if we can get that going the wrong way. Go back the other way. As it moves back, drop the speed down. So you can fine tune it and get it dead center. Alright. Looks good for my house. Now we've got that centered. Now we're going to do the declination axis. Much the same way. Again, there are no flat surfaces on here. So we're going to have to use this level right here in the saddle. And Loosen the saddle all the way up because this is a funny saddle. It's, it's got a step on both surfaces. You'll see if you have a ZEQ25 and you go to do it. And you just want to make, get that flat up against that bottom step and right there. So what we're going to do, that's off quite a bit. Going to move it in deck now until we get that, until we get that bubble level centered. Now I'm moving it right now. And drop the speed down a little bit. I'm on speed three, so you can't hear it, but the bubble is moving. And that bubble is centered. Okay. So what we've done now is we've centered it in our, we've squared it in our array. We've squared it in deck. Uh, and it's square to that T bubble that's in a tripod spreader. What you've also done at that point, if you if you were to step around to the front side of this mount, 
you will see that counterweight shaft is dead center over the north facing leg. And if it's not, then you've got to use your azimuth spreaders to get it centered because you, you, you've got it skewed all the way one way or the other. But so now you've got this part of the mount square to the tripod spreader, the tripod, and you're ready to go image. Once you've got these two surfaces squared, it's time to get a little label, scribe some pen lines on it, put the labels across the joints, and then cut the labels. Now you have a repeatable zero point. If you mess up at night and you wind up uh, somehow way off of your, your mount shuts off, you lose power to the mount in the dark. So if you want to get back to your zero point really easily, you just line up the labels, loosen the lock, lamp the labels, and drop it right in, and you're done. Okay? So that's the way I have for now. Now I'm going to show you one more thing with the OTA. So hold on, I'll be right back. All right, now we've squared the mount up to the uh, tripod, have everything as orthogonal as we can, uh, within reason. Uh, one last thing uh, I just want to mention, and you, you should probably get in the habit of doing, especially if you're imaging, if you're starting out for the night, when you do your polar alignment, center polaris, dead center in the polar scope reticle, it's about four degrees, so get it as close to the middle as possible. Once you have polaris centered in the polar scope, then center Polaris side to side in your OTA uh, by moving the OTA, by slewing it uh, in deck, up or down, which will move the, the, the scope right or left until Polaris is centered in your field of view. Uh, at that point, you've got the OTA as close as possible to being square as the rest of the mount. If you can shim your mount or rings to uh, adjust the position of Polaris up and down, at that point you could center it exactly in the center of your field of view. But if Polaris is a little high or a little low, that's, you know, that's, that's actually close enough. On my AT scopes, I do shim them so that when, the polar, when Polaris is dead center in the polar scope, it's dead center in the field of view on, the, on my camera sensor. So once you have that, you've eliminated all the cone error that you can possibly eliminate. And then you set Polaris uh, in the polar scope reticle to, to the, the correct hour position displayed in the hand controller. Do a one star uh, alignment procedure. Center that first star, dead center your camera sensor or in your crosshair EP, whatever you're using. I, don't, I haven't used an EP in years since I started imaging. But center it, dead center, whatever you're using. Uh, hit the enter button and then do your first slew to where you want to go. Uh, it will usually put that object dead center in your field of view every single time. Uh, it's a great little mount. Uh, it's accurate, tracks extremely well. Periodic error is extremely low when, when guiding it. The graph is just phenomenal. Uh, and I just got, finally, the, uh, the new style counterweight, which allows you to, to, to use about, oh, about 16 pound OTA with just one weight. because you can see, it, it slides over the end of the safety stop. This particular rig weighs 12 and a half pounds, so the, the counterweight right here is, is fine. But with the AT6, I can almost I can almost balance it by pushing this all the way down. I do have to add uh, a smaller weight on top. Okay, that's all I have for today. Uh, hopefully, you get the, you understand the concept of just squaring the mount to the tripod and then just using that tripod level as a base every time you set up. As long as you have a label on the declination joint and the RA joint. As a reference mark, you place them there, and you're off to the races. Okay? It's about as simple as I can make it. Sorry if it was a little bit long-winded, but uh, a lot of people have asked how to do this, and I hope now it's, it's a little bit more clear. Thanks, and have a great day.